Well, what's up guys, welcome back to another adventure here. Uh, so, we are in a little tiny town known as Pickle Lake. And uh, this place is pretty funny so far. Uh, so basically where we are is the most northern point of Ontario that you can actually drive to. Now there are roads, if you will, that are more north of here, but they're not real roads. This is like the most northern community connected to highways, essentially. And uh, it's a pretty cool little quirky place so far. I kind of like it. Um, I'm gonna explain a little bit more about uh, what this place is all about. But first thing, first, we're gonna go and check out the actual lake itself. This is Pickle Lake. It gets its name from its shape because it kind of looks like a pickle. Not really, I don't particularly see it, but people claim it looks like a pickle, so we're going with it. Um, <laughs> basically, uh, there ain't nothing out here. This is some uh, extreme northern remote area. Look at that, it looks like something went out onto the ice there. Um, just darken this a bit so you guys can see it. Yeah, people, uh, they travel across the lakes, man. This is pretty wild. I don't know like what went across. It kind of looks like maybe a truck or something went through there. I have absolutely no idea, but this area is quite beautiful so far. And uh, yeah, we got the flag. Oh, look at this thing. That's cool. I like that. Howdy. beautiful <laughs> so uh, essentially after arriving late last night it was a very very long ride but I've actually been talking to a few of the locals people that live here uh, people that live near here even north of here um, which is kind of crazy that people actually live even further north from this particular spot now what's nuts about it is that there are no actual real roads or direct roads that actually go to those places so there's a spot around here it's called Fort Hope and one of the people well, there was a family last night that actually pulled in and uh, they were telling me that they went to Winnipeg bought a vehicle uh, watched a, a hockey game and now they're actually on their way back home to Fort Hope now I didn't know that you can't actually drive there all year round and uh, the way that you get there is you actually have to cross lakes uh, you know streams things like that which is kind of crazy because you know being from the city we don't do those kinds of things so that's just how remote this place actually is and I didn't find that out until this morning because um, there was a gentleman inside of the restaurant he was explaining how he just came from there and it took him about seven hours if you look on the map Fort Hope to Pickle Lake does not look that far, but it takes a very long time. It's very treacherous. Uh, the winter roads are rough, um, but yeah, he still made it. Let's go walk down this road and uh, see what's down here. Probably not a whole lot. So there's like one hotel. Um, I think there's some something called Outposts over here. I'm not even really quite sure what that is. Damn, that breeze is cold, man. Holy crap. Yeah, it looks like they're down there. What a beautiful view of the lake though. I imagine this area is probably gorgeous during the summertime. So it doesn't look like there's too much out here. A couple little cabins, a canoe. I imagine people probably come here more to visit during the summer, but of course I'm the only one who comes here <laughs> during the actual winter time and visit. What's interesting um, is that I think their predominant industry here in Pickle Lake is transportation, uh, but they also do a lot of mining because apparently there are several mines north of here. I don't know if we can actually go to them, um, but there is another like town area that I might drive over to just to kind of check it out um, it looks like it's like slightly north of here 
it's not connected by any actual highway um, but it does look like there are roads in and out and there are things there so we might as well take a look just to see what it looks like but yeah dude this place is freaking crazy very very small town 400 people very quiet and you can actually see the northern lights from here when the skies are clear haven't had a chance to see them yet which is very unfortunate but if i come back here maybe in the summertime um then we'll definitely be able to see them so down there looks like there's a just a little park there's just a bunch of random buildings there's a lot of these uh fuel tanks kind of just everywhere it looks like there's a baseball diamond down there oh that's cool Alrighty. wow man talk about remoteness holy crap it kind of has like almost the alaskan feel to it <laughs> I imagine some of you guys are probably from Alaska and you're like, yeah, so what? This is normal to us. <laughs> but uh, to us people who are from, you know, near the city, this is not normal for us. We don't see this kind of stuff, this kind of remoteness, really. And just the fact that we're literally 22 hours away from home, and this is what we see, is pretty incredible. So I've turned around, uh, I'm going to head back to the hotel area, um, warm up for a second, probably get some chapstick going because my lips are uh, kind of raw at the moment, um, but then I'm going to head further down the road, uh, there's like the one department store, I guess we can go check that out, see what they have over there. Um, one thing I'm kind of curious about is like pricing, what do things cost up here in the general store? Um, I imagine they're probably much more expensive due to shipping costs. Um, although one of the predominant industries here is transportation, but because this place is so remote, obviously they have to factor that into the pricing of all the products that they sell. So I wanna, I wanna see that. Alrighty, let's uh, see what else is around this place. Um, there's a few streets here, not a whole lot, but there are some. So I think the general store Literally the only store in this place is right here across the street. Uh, guess we'll go this way. Those are some interesting looking houses. I don't know if those are houses or maybe like rentals or something. I'm not sure. We got a little truck, I guess coming to drop off the fuel. And this is how it's all done up here, guys. I wonder how often they have to come to fill up those tanks. Yeah, so that's literally how you, where you get your gas from in this small town. Just one little tiny spot. And uh, a whole lot of snow, as you guys can see. Hotels right there. Let's keep walking around, see what else we find. So I guess this is the general store? I'm not really too sure. Uh, there was signs inside the hotel that said that that's what it was. So we got the gentleman there filling up the fuel tanks. Uh, this is in fact the convenience store, Casuals Convenience. Open seven days a week, uh, blank time to blank time. Have a casual day <laughs> where everything is casual except the service. Awesome. Uh, we got signs here, groceries, books. Fries, sandwiches, chicken, pizza. Like, dude, <laughs> there's literally, like, not much going on out here. <laughs> I love it, though. It's so f awesome. And we got a random skeleton up there. That's cool. So I'm going to go in there afterwards and check out what's, uh, what's in there. Uh, it looks like there's stuff down this street, but I guess we'll go this way first. Just kind of roam around. Let's see if anyone's around. I haven't really spoken to anybody else since... Uh, since people at the hotel. I kind of want to get uh, an idea of what it is to, to live out here. So, so far the one nice thing is uh, no traffic and the air is quite clean. So quiet. I think this is the police station? I don't even know. I, saw, I thought I saw like a symbol somewhere. I just, I can't tell at the moment. Oh, we have an arena. This is the arena. I wonder if uh, if it's open. I wonder if we can go in and take a look. Okay, so I realized that this is not the police station, but it is the fire hall. Um, I guess all the engines are probably inside. What's that? There's some big building back there. I don't know what that is either. 
I don't know if that's like part of a mill or mine or something. With this town being here, I believe since the late 1930s, since they found gold, which is why the whole community was built in the first place, a lot of the houses are uh, relatively old looking. It looks like some of them people don't actually live in all year round, which I imagine kind of makes sense. Oh, this one's abandoned. Oh, look at that. There's boards on all the windows. Well, that's interesting. I would not know if it's accessible or not. <laughs> Look how much snow is in the driveway, holy crap. Wow. Yeah, it's like a, looks like a cottage or something. Huh. That's uh, I was not expecting that. Now we got somebody coming down the road on a snowmobile. <laughs> that looks fun. <laughs> yeah, so that's the uh, probably the go-to transportation around here all year round. Or sorry, what am I talking about all year round? At least all winter long. I guess it makes the most sense. It's easier than driving, I suppose. Got some more houses here. It looks like everything's boarded up. Look, there's like an old bus. And then uh, there's another house back there. I guess we'll walk down to there and then turn around. So whatever that was is also no longer in use. Got the old school bus back there. Here we have a church, um, Pickle Lake Gospel Chapel. But it doesn't look like it's open. I don't see any lights. I honestly would love to take a peek inside of the chapel just to get an idea of what it's like. I mean, we know what chapels are like closer towards the city, but what are they like out here? Well, at least we could take a look at the building. I don't think anybody's here and I highly doubt it's open, but we can document from the outside. Maybe take a peek through the doors over there. Take a look if anybody's even here. So, uh, took a peek inside. There's not really much to see because um, you can't see anything from the front doors but it's locked and uh, nobody's home so <laughs> take a little bit of a walk further up this road see what else is out here as if I'm actually doing this literally drove 22 hours to just walk around a little town but it's so fascinating because like it's so so different out here I promise you if you were to come out here you'd be like what is this place <laughs> where am I right now so it looks like all the other important stuff for the uh, town is up this way. We got the uh, OPP police station, which stands for Ontario Provincial Police. Um, we got an ambulance, a clinic, and a town office. Uh, I'm guessing it's all down this way, so we'll go around there and uh, loop around, I guess. Okay, look at that. We got uh, the municipal office, um, and then it looks like there's a clinic back there. Very, very small. Uh, and then the OPP station is there. That's where all the, the police are. Talk about small town living. <laughs> oh, it's actually a service Ontario. That's so funny. So I could literally come up here and uh, renew my driver's license if I needed to. <laughs> That's funny. Let's take a uh, better look at this. Small little clinic, not too extravagant, but uh, probably just enough for the town's needs, I suppose. And that's that, that's the clinic. Yeah, everything's very tiny, all just kind of in one little small area. So I am kind of curious as to like, how many vehicles the police actually have out here. <laughs> I'm not gonna go in because there's really no point. Oh look, there's a, a spot where there used to be an old payphone? Or is that just like the phone to talk to the cops? <laughs> Pickle Lake OPP. <laughs> That's awesome. I don't know why I'm just like all giddy. I'm just finding this so fascinating. <laughs> so there was a sign that said emergency vehicles only, but I am on foot, I'm not in a vehicle. <laughs> I just want to take a peek at what's back here. <laughs> I 
So, so far, um, I did see one SUV uh, and one, I believe it was, kind of looked like a Malibu or something. Yeah, there's no vehicles here. It's, oh, there's one there, but that might just be uh, one of the employees' cars or something. I don't know. Um, but yeah, so far, all I've seen is literally the one SUV. And I believe the reason why it was there was because um, there was a cute little fox in the middle of the road. Now, I couldn't film it because I couldn't just whip out my phone and start recording as I'm driving right past the police officer. But I think he was sitting there with his light on to warn people that it was there. Um, so it's nice to see that they take care of their wildlife over here. They obviously don't want the, the fox to die. Um, and then the other vehicle was just a Malibu or whatever, just kind of roaming through earlier this morning. That's pretty much been about it. I haven't really seen any other emergency vehicles. Then again, like I said, this town is very, very small. The population is only 400 people and it has declined over the years. But uh, I did a little bit of research and it looks like um, the old mine, it is called Pickle Crow. I would have liked to go and see it, um, but to be honest, I don't know if I can go in there. We may drive out in that direction in a little bit, just to kind of get an idea of what's out there. Um, but yeah, it looks like they're revitalizing it or they're going to be using it again very, very soon, um, which will probably create more jobs and maybe a few more people will move in. But yeah, the population is very, very small. Um, I believe it's predominantly under 14, so lots of children. Um, and then I think the second age range is like between 25 and 34. I did meet one other couple this morning um, while I was having breakfast. And she's been here for 47 years. Now, I forgot to ask them why, why they were here in the first place. But obviously she was a little bit older than that. And uh, so she's probably been living here even longer. Um, whew, fuck, I'm like out of breath. <laughs> but... Uh, yeah, my whole point is, is that uh, people have been living here for a long period of time, like almost their entire lives. And it's crazy because there's pretty much nothing out here. Um, I don't know if people, I, I think a lot of people come in here just to work. Like there's a lot of hydro repair vehicles. Um, just because of all the industry in the area, there's just a lot of minerals and a lot of industry that needs to keep running. So obviously they need power. Um, but yeah, so there's a lot of those guys. That's pretty much what I've noticed so far. The funniest part is that when I was talking to her and she's like, what are you doing here? Are you on vacation or something? And I'm like, sorta. Uh, and then I explained that obviously I'm a YouTuber and uh, I'm just kind of traveling through and she's like, why pick a lake? I'm like, why not? <laughs> I'm like, the real reason is because it's super remote. There isn't much out here and it was just an interesting thing to be able to document. So that's the reason why we're here. So one thing you do hear a lot out here are planes, little bush planes. Um, there is a little tiny municipal airport. I passed it last night. Uh, I do actually want to go and check that out. Uh, maybe just observe some of the planes kind of flying in and out if possible. Um, I don't know if we can actually stop there and look, but I will try. Uh, apart from that, I got to go to the car and get my, my lip, uh, lip chap, whatever you call it, chapstick, because it's horrible. <laughs> So I've decided to come further down the road. I don't know what this is. I think it might be like another sort of general store sort of thing. Uh, where they might sell something else. <laughs> Maybe like outdoor stuff. Uh, there is a little LCBO. I'm gonna actually go take a peek. So um, I did mention this in the vlog. So the LCBO is essentially the Liquor Commission Board of Ontario. I think that's what the acronym stands for. Uh, basically what they do is if you want to buy liquor here in the province of Ontario, in Canada, you have to go to an LCBO. 
Now when you're kind of out in the middle of nowhere, or out in the bush, whatever you want to refer to it as, small town, a lot of times the LCBOs are like in little gas stations, etc, etc. In major cities, there are standalone buildings, they're very, very large, they have a huge selection of liquor from pretty much all around the world, except for some reason bourbon. You can never find good bourbon at the LCBO, it's very disappointing. Um, but yeah, here there, it looks like there's a tiny little one, so I'm going to go to that and uh, take a look. Here we got the little town hall. Still kind of confused as to what that is, but we'll look soon. Um, but yeah, the town hall, honestly, kind of looks abandoned. It doesn't really look like there's so much anything really going on in there. The LCBO looks like a, a really good size, but what's crazy is look at it. It's like a, a giant barn almost. It's actually kind of cool. I've never seen uh, an LCBO like that. Something really annoying buzzing up there, but Harrison Block, 1976. So I thought it was like a barn, but it's not a barn. Um, okay, let's go inside and take a look. Let's see if they have Hofbra. Uh, we're pretty much almost reaching the end of the line here. There is like a bulletin thingy over here. I'm not really quite sure what that is. There's a bunch of small buildings. I don't know if these are rental cabins. Um, that one clearly has smoke coming out of it, so someone's living there. Something over here. Yeah, basically all the way down this road is where you get to the airport, which to be honest, I would like to go. But uh, I just wanted to catch a glimpse of what's on this side before I head down that way. There is a building down there, I don't know what that is. So apparently there's a, a high probability of forest fire right now. It's actually in the extreme zone. I don't know if it's supposed to be there or not, but uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, I don't know what the deal is with that. So I'm not really too sure what this property is all about. It looks like some something, <laughs> some type of business or something. But uh, I'm gonna head back to the hotel and uh, we'll probably drive over to the airport and take a look at that. And then from there, we'll see where we end up. One thing I kind of uh, forgot to mention, I was looking in the LCBO. They don't have a terrible selection here. They actually have quite a bit. Um, and the pricing is totally normal. Like it's actually, if I'm not mistaken, the same pricing as back home, which would be almost 22 hours south of here. So I was kind of under the impression that it would probably be more expensive, but I guess because you can drive in and out, transportation's really not that complicated. Um, so it's like not that difficult really to get supplies out to a small town like this, even though it's so remote, so remote and so far out here. Um, but yeah, like a, a case of Stella six pack was $16.95 Canadian, which is basically the same price back home. So I've uh, located the post office. There is the Nishnalbi Aski Legal Services Corporation. I do apologize if I said that incorrectly. I'm doing the best <laughs> that I possibly can. And then it also kind of looks like there's clothing or something in here. I don't know what this is exactly. Maybe we can go in and take a look. Okay, so I uh, ended up going in and taking a look at this northern thing. Um, so it looks like it's just kind of like a general store. Well, not really a general store, but like uh, like a very, very small Walmart. Uh, I, look at, I looked at some of the other spots over there. There's a hardware store. So if you count, in total, there's maybe about, what, five, six small businesses, tops, that service all of the almost 400 people in this area. Um, the one last thing I'm going to go and take a look at is the general store because I have not had a chance to go in there yet. So, uh, yeah, back in my hotel room here, just warming up a little bit. Um, I am going to probably head over to the airport and then go a little bit further north just to kind of get an idea of what's out there. Um, but yeah, that is pretty much the small town of Pickle Lake. There is not much here. Um, clearly there are people who live here all year round. There's a school. They have all the services, active police. Um, everything they pretty much need in this one small little town except maybe like groceries I don't know I didn't really take a look at what that northern store if they had groceries in there they probably do and I just didn't notice it um, because I didn't go in um, but yeah this is my hotel room here at the uh, the Pickle Lake Hotel pretty cool spot it's uh, it's convenient 
Um, there is a bed and breakfast up the road, but honestly, I just ended up opting for this place. It has a great little restaurant attached to it that's open till like 8.30. Um, I got in so late last night that the only thing they could make me was anything fried. So I ended up having chicken fingers and fries and honestly, delicious. Now, I usually don't have starches or carbs or things like that because I try to stick to the keto diet. Um, but I had no other choice. It was either that or I starved the entire night. I did buy two boxes of granola bars because I wasn't sure like what was going to be up here exactly. So I ended up buying those just in case I needed them. It's always a good snack for later on anyway. But um, yeah, this is the hotel room. Nothing too fancy. There's a door to go outside and for some reason it's taped shut. I don't really know why, <laughs> but it just kind of is what it is. Um, but yeah, I'm going to get myself ready and uh, probably head over to the airport and then go further north and just see what's out there. Uh, the one thing I will say about this place is uh, the weather is very deceiving. Um, so it's not really that cold but there's just such a chill in the air out here that you freeze your butt off pretty damn quickly so i am here at the airport um i just kind of wanted to check it out because i keep hearing planes all day long taking off uh, i just thought it would be kind of cool to document there's really only like two planes here this is a very very small airport um i think it's mostly used probably for industrial purposes plus bringing in you know supplies and stuff to the communities in the surrounding area but <laughs> there's one plane here uh it's called wasaya i have never heard of that in my entire life this is all new to me <laughs> so i guess that's like the company that does probably a lot of the transportation and stuff here there's one plane there there's that little tiny building uh there was one little tiny plane that took off just a couple minutes ago unfortunately i missed it but yeah all the passengers have to literally wait in this little tiny building over here <laughs> so freaking awesome i just realized there was one building like all the way down there as well um i'm not gonna walk all the way over there but let's just see if we can see another little tiny plane taking off there's one more over here it's uh just a two two engine propeller plane Oh, it looks like they're uh, they're doing something. Cool. I don't know what it is, but watching planes take off is just such a cool freaking thing. Also, because there's so much snow, it's so bright out here that it is absolutely blinding. When I was walking around the town earlier, I swear afterwards I was like, holy crap, man. <laughs> I can't see a single thing. My retinas have been burned. Got a helicopter coming in on that side. Can't really see where it is. I don't know where it's gonna land. Oh, there it is, I see it. I've been hearing a lot of helicopters too. They just kinda go back and forth. Yeah, and then we got this one little plane. Looks like they're getting it ready. Uh, oh, you know what it is? Sky Care. Okay, so that's how they like fly people, I guess, to hospitals and stuff. That makes sense because there's an ambulance sitting here. Oh wow, okay. It's kind of fascinating to watch. Just to know how they like do these things. So I can see the uh, chopper over there is coming in for a landing. Looks like it's gonna land behind that building over there. I don't know what it is, but all right. I'm gonna keep waiting and see if we uh, see any planes take off. Okay, so uh, I could see them taking a, a patient out of the ambulance and bringing them into the uh, the plane. Um, now, I don't wanna be rude. Uh, I'm not gonna film that, but uh, if they take off sometime soon, because we are kind of running out of daylight, because um, the sun goes down kind of early. So if, we, if they do happen to take off soon, then we will be able to film that. But uh, yeah, I could see them just kind of like, getting everything set up here they got the patient out on the uh next to the plane so i assume they're going to probably lift them up and bring them in there i wonder how they do that i've never seen that before there we go we finally got a plane that's uh moving i don't know if it just landed oh i think it's uh it's turning it's preparing to take off this is what i wanted to see Might have actually just landed. Looks 
like they're starting up the plane here. We got one engine. And we're just waiting for them to start number two. So it looks like we're gonna get to see a plane take off. This is gonna be awesome. <laughs> Love it. Waiting for that engine number two. All right. like the planes take off going this way or that way so uh, we're just gonna have to give it a second there goes the chopper again all right we'll give it a second and see which uh, direction they end up going here we go oh that's a different plane coming in this way, but you can't even see like where they land from. That one's a pretty big plane actually. Oh, it's probably like transport and stuff. That was pretty cool um yeah we got to see one plane land although i guess when they come in from that way you can't really see it <laughs> until it's like finally over here but at least we got to see that one uh medical transport plane fly out that was pretty freaking cool um but yeah i guess i'm gonna head to an area known as central patricia it looks like it's actually a little bit more north than here um, but the only thing is it's not actually connected to any sort of highway. It looks to be like just a bunch of dirt roads and whatnot. So hopefully we can get there. It's really not too far, so it shouldn't be that hard to do. Um, and then maybe we'll see if we can go even a little bit northern from there. I don't know what's out there. I don't know what we're going to find. It doesn't look like there's very much. I would personally like to make it to Highway 808 because that is where a lot of people drive in and out of to get to uh, other communities. A lot of the native communities are out that way. So it's pretty interesting. All right, so we're going to Central Patricia. Um, should be, I guess, going up some dirt roads. Looks like some other people are going this way too. So. I'm not alone. <laughs> We're basically convoying. So I did find a little cemetery. There's like a really nice looking cross over there. It's not huge. Uh, what does that say? 1964, I think it was established. Might come check that out on the way back. Um, but in the meanwhile, looks like that's where we're going. Uh, looks like another small little community. Uh, let's go check it out. So it doesn't look like there's much out here. Looks like there's a gas station. Um, so it doesn't look like anybody actually lives here, maybe? Oh, well, there's a house there. But I don't know. I don't know if they just use these all for like businesses and stuff, but, but there really is not much going on out here. Let's go a little further up the road and see what might be there. Oh, look at that thing. That thing looks hella old. So I think this is all uh, part of the mining that they do up here. Let's go a little further. Man, at this point, I'm gonna just keep saying let's go a little further until we get completely lost. 
We still got full cell service, so we are good just in case we do actually get lost. So I just saw a sign that says, Welcome to Pickle Lake, <laughs> coming in this way. Um, I'm gonna go a little bit further, but I think that's just about it. I don't think there's anything else uh, beyond this point unless you literally drive for about seven hours through dirt roads, over a lake, um, streams, all sorts of craziness, um, which, Honestly, I'm not gonna do. Not on this trip. Maybe I'll come back one day and uh, actually document what it's like to go into what's known as a fly-in reserve. That's what the, the gentleman this morning referred to it as. Um, the only driving in and out that you can do is obviously during the winter when all the water freezes because then at that point you can actually drive over it. But apart from that, like during the summer, it's a no-go zone unless you want to actually fly in, which maybe we will do. Maybe we'll do at some point, but I'm going to drive a little further down and then uh, so I, I got to check my maps first because we're about to lose service and uh, I want to see if there's anything that may be of interest um, all the way up this road. So I decided I'm going to check out one more spot before I turn around and head back. It's called Little Pickle Lake. Um, I guess it's just <laughs> a small version of the pickle. It doesn't even look like a pickle, but whatever. Um, that's pretty much the beginning of Highway 808, which is basically all the dirt roads that go uh, further north. So we're here. There's something in there, but um, I don't know what it is. I don't know if these are like people's properties or whatever. I have no idea. I don't know if these are like campgrounds, but there's like a lake. Literally Head right there. On Highway 808, but, North Road. Uh, I don't I don't really see anything. Like there's no nothing that's telling me whether I can actually go in there or not. So I'm gonna turn around for a sec. I might just head back. Okay, so there's uh one hundred percent um somebody's property here. Uh <laughs> it just says no trespassing, so clearly we cannot go in that way. Um or go in there at all rather. So what I'm gonna do is I guess at this point just start heading back. Um, we're pretty much at Highway 808, and at this point, once we're done here, like, is this even asphalt? I don't even think I'm on asphalt anymore. So after this, it's pretty much just dirt roads um, all the way north. Like, you can, I don't, I don't even know, like, how far you can go. The only one that I know so far is this Fort Hope. Um, it did look like there may or may not have been a couple of other communities out there. But uh, they're pretty far and pretty freaking remote. So so we're going to have to leave those for another day, another adventure, I suppose. Maybe one day I will make arrangements to actually go out that way. Um, but apart from that, I'm going to just start heading back and, uh, yeah, figure something out from there. Okay, so I'm uh, going to try and do something here. There is an old gold mine up here. I believe it was gold. Uh, it's called Pickle Crow. And it's about 10 minutes seven kilometers up this random snowy narrow road um, i don't know if i can get all the way in there but i kind of want to take a peek at as to what it looks like because i believe that was one of the famous mines and one of the reasons why they built a community out here and kind of why it's still ongoing after all these years so we're gonna see if we can get all the way in there i don't really know um but yeah i kind of just wanted to take a look well, we've reached the end of the road. Apparently, we cannot go any further. Uh, normally, I would, but this is an active thing. If it was abandoned, I probably would have gone further. Um, but yeah, it looks like we got to turn around and go back. So, Pickle Lake. Um, what is there to say about Pickle Lake? Um, first of all, a lot of things. To be honest with you, it kind of felt like, um, like being in Alaska. I mean, not quite Alaska. I imagine Alaska's probably pretty different, but I don't know. Pickle Lake was just very different as well. It was just, um, I mean, you have that small town vibe, a lot of freaking snow, um, a lot of people kind of coming and going. It seemed almost like a center point to the people who lived in the communities up north, which was really, really fascinating because I ended up finding out afterwards because Pickle Lake and the reason why it's like kind of notorious is that no one's ever really, first of all, documented the entire place. Like 
when I started doing my research on it, there really wasn't much to it. So I was kind of going on a whim and I kind of honestly thought that there was going to be nobody there, but there actually was quite a few people there. So there seems to be obviously a lot of business, which is why people are going there in the first place. Um, but also, like I said, kind of like a stop off for people before they end up going towards Fort Hope or any of the other communities. There are other communities that you can drive to. Um, it's not particularly known as like a highway. They're more, more or less just dirt roads, loose gravel, that sort of thing. Um, but yeah, going towards Fort Hope, which is interesting because I found out afterwards that in order to get there, you have to cross lakes, streams, um, or fly in. It is known as a fly-in reserve, which is just so fascinating. I would love to know uh, what it's like to live in a place like Fort Hope, where it's just so remote, it's somewhere you cannot drive to during the summer. Um, so yeah, I mean, <laughs> there's just, I don't know. I did meet a family uh, at the hotel. It was just by chance. I was outside and they pulled in. They were trying to use the Wi-Fi. I gave them the password and uh, Just so that way they I guess they could figure out where it was that they were going They were actually coming back from Winnipeg and bringing a vehicle back home um, I Stupid me. I should have asked them for their names. I do know that uh, Their son I believe subscribed to the channel. So if you're watching this, please message me maybe on Instagram or um, I don't know Facebook or something whatever probably Instagram because I check messages there more often uh, I would like to Organize maybe a trip to go up there. Obviously. I just gotta you know coordinate with them to Be able to I guess be shown like the cool things to see uh, Film their way of life how they live up there You know what it's like during the summer what it's like during the winter that sort of thing because it's just so far out there and undocumented and I would really really love to do stuff like that. I just want to know like what is life really really like out there? Anyways apart from that what else is there to say about Pickle Lake? Um, the one restaurant that was part of the hotel the food was actually pretty good not gonna lie the service was good um, I didn't feel like anybody the one thing that I did find was that people were kind of like nice Right, it's just very different from city life when you're from the city people are generally moody unless you kind of know Certain people obviously like your friends or people you see on a day-to-day -day basis But I find like back home people are just a lot moodier for some reason um, But over there it just felt like everybody was very receptive everybody wanted to talk everybody wanted to chat um, I had a lot of really good conversations a lot of people who were very confused as to why I was even there in the first place um because it's just such a small town, there's basically nothing there, right? Like, they do have all the necessities, you know, you have the police, the fire station, school, arena, couple of stores, one restaurant, hotel, a bed and breakfast, and that's pretty much it. Most people that generally go up there, they go for, you know, obviously hunting, fishing, that sort of thing, or they're just kind of passing through. Now, the other thing I wanted to talk about was um, what the thing was about before getting to Pickle Lake, I guess, I don't know. There's been some sort of maybe rumors, possibly, about people, you know, ambushing people as they're on the way to Pickle Lake, which is kind of strange because I didn't experience anything like that. I didn't see anybody that looked shady in any way, shape, or form. Um, driving back, there was just like a few people, there, there is a reserve that before you get to Pickle Lake, there was just like people kind of just walking around doing their thing, um, you know, and that was pretty much it. Like I didn't see anybody doing anything nefarious. I didn't feel in any way, shape or form threatened while I was in Pickle Lake or on the way to or after I left. Um, obviously right now we're well past Pickle Lake. I'm actually in Wawa, Ontario in my Airbnb and uh, yeah. So on two occasions I did hear sort of the same thing. One of them being from somebody who commented in the video, somebody who watches the videos and uh, because I had obviously mentioned I was going there and I'll read what they said in a second but even before going there I did uh, befriend somebody 
and it wasn't something that they experienced themselves, but something that they had heard from someone else. I don't know if they experienced something or heard again from somebody else, but this is kind of like broken telephone. It's just kind of like one of those things that maybe it was made up for one reason or another. I don't know. Um, but I'm just kind of like, I want to, because I know it was probably mentioned in one of my videos, and obviously I, I want to clarify like what my experience was like and what other people's experiences are like as well. Um, I'm just saying I don't know, right? I've only driven in and out this time, but the other person, like I had mentioned, said something along the lines of, people like to ambush people on the way up there. I don't know who it is that's doing this, um, I don't know why, and I don't know if it's even true. That's the thing. So that's why I'm kind of trying to clarify here because I don't want rumors to be started and them not being true when it comes to things like this for many, many reasons, right? Um, but yeah, basically I was explained, as I said, somebody lies in the middle of the road in order to get you to stop your car. And then once you do stop your car, you're essentially ambushed. And then after that, because at first I was like, okay, that sounds kind of crazy. And it could be a possibility because you're out in the middle of nowhere. You have about three and a half, almost four hours where you're driving and there's absolutely no cell service whatsoever to the point where I don't even think you can make an emergency call. There are certain places where you can make an emergency call with your phone, even if you have no service. In this case, there is no service. And in Pickle Lake, particularly, you cannot call 911, it does not exist. In Pickle Lake, you have to call the police phone number directly in order to get a hold of Ontario Provincial Police. Never seen that in my life. That That's just how remote this place actually is. Um, so the other thing that we saw, somebody screenshotted this and sent this to me. It was one of the comments in my video. I think it was on a, one of my vlogs, which was one very long, scary drive to the great white north, I found a hidden gem. So this is actually where I first spoke of what I had been told. And the only reason I said it was because I'm sharing what other people know and other experiences. I'm not saying it's true. I'm not saying it's not true because I do not know. So somebody commented and said, um, and this is nothing against the person who commented. This is apparently somebody who lives in the area and also may have heard things. Again, maybe true, maybe not true, no idea. So they said, hey Angelo, curious why you're going to pick a lake. It's kind of dangerous to drive out there. Let's just say the place before it, keep driving, don't stop for anyone's cops even recommend it, just letting you know. Big fan of yours. You will only be a few hours away from us, LOL. So yeah, I don't know. I don't know what that's all about. I don't know what their experience is like. Um, maybe if you want to share that experience, let me know um, what that's like. If you experience something or maybe somebody else experienced something, I have no idea. I didn't have a chance to speak to any of the police officers because they're just, they weren't really kind of sticking around. They were just kind of, you know, patrolling the area, roaming around. So I didn't have a chance to even ask them if that was true. Um, and again, stupid me, I'm new to this like kind of extreme travel thing and I should have probably asked somebody who was there, but I also kind of didn't want to like insult people and say like, hey, I heard this crazy thing that's happening. Um, like people apparently are ambushing people on the way up here and then being like, why would you say something like that? Um, I just, I didn't want to do that. I didn't feel like it was my place to do so. So I kind of just winged it, you know, had a good experience overall. Um, what else is there really to say about Pickle Lake? Apart from apparently random rumors about being ambushed going up there, which never happened. So <laughs> what else is there to really say? Uh, it is chilly. Um, it's generally cold everywhere in Northern Ontario, pretty much once you're, you know, six to eight hours north of any of the major cities down in Southern Ontario, it gets pretty chilly. Tonight is about minus 11, minus 12 degrees Celsius. Pretty cold. Not terribly cold, but cold enough. Um, yeah, apart from that, it was like a, a pretty chill vibe. I liked um, the nature-y aspect, like, you know, the very rural um, quietness, not much going on, very few people, 
I mean, you only have a population of what, 300 and I think it was 98 or something like that. So we're talking very, very small town. Um, but yeah, apart from that, I'm very much looking forward to doing more of this. This was just kind of like a small taste of doing something like this, kind of going to crazy places. I mean, if you've been following this channel and uh, the vlog channel for a while now, you know I love going to all sorts of different travel locations. All over the US, I've been to probably 40 different states. Uh, Province-wise here in Canada, I've done probably at least half the country, which is great. Uh, hopefully I can get the rest of it done before the end of the year and then maybe start hitting up some of the territories. Like I said, I, I really want to do like these crazy out there locations like Fort Hope where it's going to take seven hours crossing lakes and dirt roads, ice roads, um, stuff like that would be incredible. So again, to the person who I met that night, um, reach out to me. Hopefully we can arrange something because that would be awesome to come and visit. But that is pretty much it. I hope you guys enjoyed. Let me know if there's any crazy places that you want me to go to, right? Where Whether it's crazy travel locations, other haunted locations, um, things like that. I'd be interested and I'm kind of trying to like mix it up and maybe kind of combine all this together because I think they kind of would go hand in hand and it would be fun. So fun for me, fun for you guys to watch entertainment wise. Um, I'll probably go up to Pickle Lake again in the future. I don't know when, but I guess like if we get the invitation to go to Fort Hope, then we'll be back up in P Pickle Lake because you've got to go through there again, right? Um, maybe I'll go during the summer just to kind of see what it's like. I don't know yet, but uh, yeah, I got a lot of plans coming up. I think we're going to Japan soon. Um, definitely going to the Dominican Republic. That's already booked. Um, going to do some stuff like this out there as well, plus mix it up with some abandoned, haunted, all sorts of crazy stuff. So again, smash the like button, subscribe if you're new, and uh, turn those notifications on, and uh, leave me a comment down below of what you think uh, about Pickle Lake. Um, and yeah, that is pretty much it. I will see you guys in the next one. Love you. Bye-bye.